Let R be the shaded region bounded by the graph of y equals the natural log of x and the line y equals x minus 2, as shown above. Write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that can be used to find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the y-axis. Here we are rotating R about the y-axis. That means that we have to integrate with respect to y. Let's make a picture of what is actually going on here. So I flipped R, and so here is the flip of R about the y-axis. Now, we have space in between our axis of revolution and the region itself, which means that we're going to have to use washer rule here. We can construct our washers by first looking at the outside, the larger circle, which extends from here all the way inward to around here. So here is our larger circle. And of course, our smaller circle extends from inside to inside right here. And so this is what creates our washers. Here is the outside and here is the inside. Now, because our radius has to be in terms of y, that means that we should write our functions as a function of y. So, this line right here was y equals x minus 2, but now let's solve for x and you get x is equal to y plus 2. Furthermore, this inside of here is y equals the natural log of x. However, if you raise both sides to the power of e, you get x is equal to e to the y. And so now we've written our functions in terms of y. Well, we know that we have an intersection point right here, which is where we're going to begin. And we have an intersection point up here which is where we're going to end. And of course, remember that we are integrating with respect to y. We are stacking up these washers along the y-axis, which means that we are integrating from y equals this particular y value down here, we'll call that y1, up to this particular y value up here. Now, we can set e to the y equal to y plus 2 in order to solve for these two points of intersection. And what we get is that y1, this bottom point of intersection, is that y is equal to negative 1.841 and y2 is equal to 1.146. So now we have our limits of integration. Now we need the actual areas of these cross sections, which is the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared. And so, we have pi on the outside, we've taken that out, because we have pi big R squared minus pi little r squared, so we just pull that pi out, times the integral from y1, which is negative 1.841, to y2, which is approximately 1.146 of my big radius. Now my big radius is the distance from the y-axis to this line y plus 2. That's just the line y plus 2. So here we have big radius y plus 2 squared minus the smaller radius. Now the smaller radius is the distance from the y-axis to x equals e to the y. So this is e to the y squared dy. And so this right here is the setup, this is the integral expression that, that can be used to find the volume of the solid generated when we rotate this r about the y-axis. It's pi big r squared minus pi little r squared, but of course we've taken that pi out and we found the y values of our points of intersection.
When the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x and y equals 4x minus x squared is revolved about the y-axis, the volume of the solid generated is given by what formula? Well, let's create a graph to see what exactly is going on here. So we have y equals x, that is a diagonal going through the origin. So here's one of our equations. And of course, we're looking at what's happening uh, in between these enclosed graphs. And the other one is 4x minus x squared. To graph that easily, we can just factor out an x. We're left with 4 minus x. That means that we have y equals 0 when x is equal to 0 or 4. Those are the x-intercepts. So we have one at x equals 0, another x-intercept at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, this is an upside down uh, parabola. And so this one is going to go up like this and probably down like that. So we're looking at this region inside of here. Well, we're going to rotate this region around the y-axis. So what that means is, is that everything here is going to get flipped, including our line so we have y equals negative x going this way. And also, let's flip about our parabola. Here's one, two, three, four. So here's four over here. And this also gets flipped like that. So we can construct our washers. And we're going to have washers here because there is empty space in between our axis of revolution and our region. So our larger circle is extending from y equals x to y equals negative x over here. And our smaller circle is extending from the parabola over to this parabola over here. So before anything, we need to figure out our limits of integration here. We are integrating from 0 to well, whatever the maximum of our parabola is. Now, how can we find the max of our parabola? We can find it, well, probably by doing a little bit of calculus on it. We can maximize this by taking the derivative. So y prime is equal to 4 minus 2x. We can set this equal to 0. That means that x is equal to 2. And we can ensure that this is a max by checking whether y prime is changing from negative to positive or positive to negative at x equals 2. We can plug in 0, positive. Plug in 3, it's negative. So this is indeed a local max. So we have a local max at x equals 2. The problem though is that we are integrating with respect to y because our cross sections are about the y-axis. So that means that we need to find the y value up here. And we can plug 2 back into here, and we get 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2 squared is 4, 8 minus 4, that is 4. So we are integrating from 0 up to 4. So let's put this here. This is up here is y is equal to 4. Now, our larger radius, big R, is the distance from the y-axis to this line y equals x. Now we have some problems here because both of our equations are written in terms of y. We have to rewrite them to be in terms of x equals y. y equals x is very easy to change into x equals y. You just flip it. Done. However, our parabola is a bit more difficult. So let's find a way that we can turn our parabola into x equals some function of y. Our parabola is y is equal to 4x minus x squared. Now to do this, let's complete the square on the right hand side. So here we have y is equal to negative x squared plus 4x. As it is now, we can't complete the square. We first have to factor this negative out from in front of the x squared. So we have y is equal to negative 
x squared minus 4x, and we have to add some number in order to complete the square. How do we know what number we have to add? Well, we take our b term, we divide it by 2, we get negative 2, and then we square that. So that's positive 4. Now, we're not actually adding 4. We're actually adding negative times 4. That's negative 4. And if we add negative 4 to the right-hand side, we also have to add negative 4 to the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, here we have y minus 4 is equal to negative. This now factors down to x minus 2 squared. We have just completed the square. Now to solve for x, we can get rid of this negative by moving it over here. So we have 4 minus y is equal to x minus 2 squared. And now we can square root both sides. And I'm going to flip this whole equation around. So we have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y. And of course, we can finally add 2 to both sides. So we have x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y. Now let's consider what this plus or minus actually means relative to our graph. The center of this parabola is up here at 2 comma 4. So at x equals 2, we can solve in here and you actually get that y has to be equal to 4 because that makes the square root equal to 0. So really, the center of this is at our max. That means that the positive side is everything to the right of the max and the negative is everything to the left of the max. Well, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the left of this max over here. So we're actually looking at the negative square root. So we're going to get rid of the positive right here. And now we have written this parabola as a function of x in terms of y. Here we have x is equal to 2 minus the square root of 4 minus y. It's at this point now that we can write out big R Big R is the distance from the y-axis to the line x equals y. That's just y. And of course, little r is equal to the distance from the y-axis to this parabola. And of course, that is now 2 minus the square root of 4 minus y. Well, it's at this point that we can now write out the entire integral. And we have, we can pull out the pi times the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 4. So this is the integral from 0 to 4 of big R, which is y squared minus little r, which is 2 minus the square root of 4 minus y squared dy. And this right here is the form, it's a setup for finding the area of this solid.